Welcome to this edition of Insights from the Field. This is the first in a three-part series covering installation and connection of the Intelligent Web Server card, navigating the Intelligent Web Server page, and finally, interfacing with the Intelligent Remote Portal. First things first, remember to work safely, so remove power from the unit. Now, if you ordered an intelligent unit cooler with the web server card already installed, you're good to go. However, for the purposes of this video, we're assuming that you're adding a web server card to an existing intelligent unit. Before we show you the actual step-by-step -step process, take a look at the following animation for an overview of the easy step-by-step -step process. After removing power from the unit, perform the following steps. Step 1. Mount the web server card on the main IRC board. Step 2. Fasten the board with two 632 by 1 inch stainless steel machine screws. Step 3. Connect the Ethernet cable to the web server card. Step 4. Connect the other end of the Ethernet cable to the Wi-Fi router. Step 5. Reapply power to the intelligent system and power to the Wi-Fi router. Step 6. Select the Wi-Fi router's SSID from your smartphone or tablet. Step 7. Obtain the unit's IP address from the intelligent user interface. Step 8. Open a browser. Type the web server card's IP address and communicate with the intelligent system. Step 9. Connect the router to the internet. Step 10. Open a free account on the intelligent.online website. Step 11. Generate authentication code from the Intelligent User Interface. From the Intelligent User Interface, follow the menu path. Select Generate Code. Note, the Intelligent System must be connected to the Internet. Step 12. From the Intelligent Online Landing Page, access your account. Your new system can be added by selecting the Register New System button. A blue page will appear with space to input a six-digit registration code. Input the six-digit code that appeared in the user interface display. Step 13. Once the code is accepted, your new intelligence system can be accessed remotely from any internet-connected device. Now let's step inside the walk-in cooler to show these steps one more time on an actual intelligent unit. Come on in. In the initial picture here, you'll see the main circuit board without the web server card. That's the way it comes from the factory. You'll then have to install the web server card, piggybacking it on the IRC control board. That's the main board. After that, you need to install two 632 by one inch stainless steel machine screws to get it securely put in place. Do not over tighten these screws. They only need to be snugged in place. Then you have your Cat5 cable that needs to be put in place there, so snug that in place, make sure it's inserted, and you hear the click for the secure safety pin squarely. Put your wires in place. Close the UI cabling port. And that completes step one. The next step is to find the IP address for the web server card. For that, 
you'll have to go to general settings after turning on the unit. So you move from monitor, find general settings, select that. Now you turn the adjustment knob until you find IP address settings. Find that, turn the knob, and your IP address for that card should appear in the display. The other end of that Cat5 cable that was just installed on the web server card now must go to the Wi-Fi router. Install that cable on any port other than the one marked Internet. You can now go to your device, whether it's a cell phone or a tablet. Now you can pull up your web browser and type in the IP address that you read on the display of that intelligent display board. This concludes part one in our series describing setup of local and remote access of intelligent controllers. As always, we hope this was helpful, and please watch out for part two of our series, Navigating the Intelligent Web Server webpage. Thank you for joining us.